Staying consistent, consistency is the key to any and everything. You cannot be successful if you're not consistent. Okay, I will fast today. I take a nap break for the next three days. Yes, I will go back on it. No, it don't work so, no. You'll be finding yourself eating it, eating it, eating it, eating it, eating it, eating it all the time. You don't have it in your home. Don't have it in your home. Don't have it in your home. Now, let's get on to this topic. Five easy steps to be successful with weight loss. So, not weight loss. What am I saying? Is these laugh lines or bother in my head so that I have me talking about? Well, I'm basically it's the same thing because intermittent fasting, you know, we're talking about taking down some weight. Oh, I need to look up what I could do to make this not so noticeable because, oh gosh, it's true again. All oh, but come on, man. Hmm, L, what you doing, girl? Stop making me laugh. Oh, chai. All right, so. Let's discuss this. And we're gonna we're gonna go from five to one. Okay. I have everybody right on here. So I wanted this to be quick. I'm over um, over a minute, almost two minutes already. So let's get started. Five. about make this process about you we have this idea that when we're going into weight loss most times especially women it's not about us we want to look good for we husband our boyfriend our fiance we want to make this one jealous envious whatever us or oh, you know we're not making it about us most of the times and we need to start to understand when we're going through a process to make our body healthy and when we look in the mirror, we like what we're seeing. It's about you the individual and you're not doing it for nobody else but yourself. So when you're going into intermittent fasting, this thing takes a toll on you mentally, emotionally, and physically. And you need to make this about you because that will also play a part in you sabotaging this whole process. You understand what I'm saying? All right. Number four, consistency. Oh my gosh. With intermittent fasting, if you are not remaining consistent, what you may have taken off would come like a prrrr. You would want to know what happened. It is very important, and I repeat, very, very important to be consistent with intermittent fasting. I will repeat that. It is very important to be consistent on intermittent fasting. Why? Because it is very easy to, to fall off the wagon when you're on intermittent fasting. Because it's a really hard thing mentally. Because especially for the first week, you go through a process of headaches. You go through a process where you... You're feeling a little run down. You would feel it. It would be wearing on your body. Yeah, because I remember there is a longer period of time where you're fasting and your body is starting to eat off the fat that is there. So when your body is in a cortisol mood and it's eating off itself, off itself, that is the way you would lose the most amount of weight. That, that period of time, the fat will break down faster when you eat after a long process of fasting right so it weighs on you but if you don't remain consistent you will fall off the wagon very very easy 
after one day those head because in the first two days the headaches that you would have is a little ridiculous and if you don't say to yourself you know you, you know what is happening to you you're not sick nothing wrong with you you take something for the headache it will go you know after the second day or so that would be it that would be it but consistency is important with intermittent fasting number three self-sabotage i just mentioned you will sabotage the whole process if you in serious about going into intermittent fasting and obviously your fasting time would be wider than your eating time right okay you would have so much of stuff in your home when you open the refrigerator there is candies there is cereals there is all sorts of things to in your reach you would go and take it so if you know these things will trigger you to go and eat in the period where you're supposed to be fasting do have it stop self-sabotaging because you don't want to put yourself in positions where you go and do what you're not supposed to be doing don't set goals that you know is unattainable for you right now set when you now start this process set small goals do not set goals that is ridiculous and you will you can't see it through don't set meal plans or meals that you know you will not be able to keep up with because you're going to fail and then you will go back to your old pattern and then you would just mess up the whole process don't sabotage the process don't put yourself in positions or don't create situations where you sabotage yourself it, it doesn't make sense right do your best and you will eliminate certain things from your home so if you're going to start this process clear out certain things from your refrigerator from your cupboards don't have certain things at your nightstand just don't have it in your reach and if you have kids or a husband that you know like these things have a conversation with your family so they would know well, look let's not put this in the refrigerator because our mom or whoever is going through this process let's help them along you know it's all about communication and working together if you're a single person you have no excuse do it do what is right to help you not to sabotage your process in this journey and uh -huh, my mom is trying to fall on from here And then I have have your record have your record when you want to start this process I suggest that you you write everything down you want to start off with your weight when you're started you want to start off with the hours of fasting you want to have a record of everything so there you can track where you're going wrong everything you eat today write it down so you could track oh no you know what i think i should not have this today you know i wouldn't do this tomorrow i'll try something else. you know what i mean so you're keeping a track that way you would hold your own self accountable for if you see because you have a vision there you see in where you sliding so you know you know i shouldn't do this i should tweak this a little bit so you could find ways to hold yourself accountable when you have a record of it simple as that you know and never have food ready to go to me once you have those things in your home it is very easy as i go back about staying consistent and sabotaging yourself because if you have things in your refrigerator like an easy meal something easy you would sometimes find yourself eating in the windows that you're supposed to be fasting and eating more than you're supposed to be eating in the period when you're supposed to be eating now okay so i would do it from i would have my breakfast coffee at 10 um coffee at 8 sorry breakfast at 10 lunch at 2 nothing for the rest of the day until the next day at 8 o'clock in the morning where I have my coffee and I do the whole process again. So when I say you will not be eating in the windows that you're not supposed to be eating or eating in the windows that you're supposed to be eating, this is what I'm referring to. So I have my coffee. To break my fast, I would start with the coffee. The coffee, no sugar, no milk. That helps boost my metabolism. 
that will also help me break down the fat from the breakfast I'm about to have at 10 o'clock right good so I have my breakfast at 10 o'clock when I have my breakfast at 10 o'clock I could have a snack within two hours that is 12 o'clock and then I will have a lunch my lunch at two o'clock so you see there is a time frame between everything that I'm eating a two hour window between 10 and 2 there is a window sometimes I don't go to 2 so if I want to have so if I have an event coming up and I want to just take off a little one or two inches this is what I will do I will scale back from 2 to 12 I will leave the breakfast time as is but what I'm saying is my fasting period will be longer it will be two hours longer because I didn't eat at 2 o'clock today, I ate at 12 o'clock today and my next meal will be till the next day at breakfast. So that is only in times when I know I have something to do, somewhere to go and I want to have a nice look. So I would make sure, you know, I, I do a longer fasting period, I'll do that. So if you know you're going to pick out today, do it in a window where you can give yourself the next day a longer fasting period. And if you want me to have a next conversation about that, I will gladly do it. That's not a problem because I like talking about how I find doing certain things work best on intermittent fasting. So going back to how I was talking about windows. So if you're having a snack, do it within a two hour window of your next meal or the meal that you just had. Do not go in the refrigerator and pull out a snack between the hours you're supposed to be fasting. And if you're having a day where you're having a snack day, okay, so Friday I choose as a snack day, make sure you're having that snack in the window that you're supposed to be eating and not in the window that you're supposed to be fasting. You're defeating the purpose of the fasting period, right? So, that is how I would do it and that is what I, I know it works because it has been working for me. You eating intermittent fasting is not about starving yourself. You're not starving yourself. All right, because you're having anything and everything, but just at smaller portions and you're and, and at specific times. You're right. You're not, you're not, you're not starving yourself and you're not going to go hungry or it's not a diet really. It's about being responsible and tracking how you're eating and giving your body time to digest, break down, right? And once your body fasting for so long and your body is in that cortisol mood and you go and eat, then you have burning more calories and doing what your body's supposed to be doing and the weight will drop off. Is that a myth? You just need to do what you have to do. And once you do it correctly, it is, it could be done. So let's go over those five quick and easy steps to be successful with intermittent fasting. Five, make it about yourself, not about nobody else, but you, right? Staying consistent. Consistency is the key to any and everything. You cannot be successful if you're not consistent. Okay, I will fast today. I take a break for the next three days. Yes, I will go back on it. No, it don't work so. No. Self-sabotage. Do not put things in your home that you know is easily accessible where you need to be, you, you'll be finding yourself eating it, eating it, eating it, eating it, eating it, eating it all the time. You don't have it in your home. Don't have it in your home. Don't have it in your home anything that you know that you would want to eat 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 like chocolates and the sea drinks and the candies and all these things that you know you always grab it on the go to have it in your home now anything that is too easy and sweet or salty to have it in your home now right because that would be sabotaging the process because you might find yourself eating it in the window where you're supposed to be fasting and even if you're having it as I said in the window that you're supposed to be fasting not so fa not fasting but eating you know you you eating between the hours of 10 like how I do in between 10 and 2 
that don't mean you're going to eat from 10 straight on till 2 o'clock. And then after 2 you stop. That is madness. That is total madness. It don't look so... <laughs> so it's about consistency and stop sabotaging the process. Have your record to hold yourself accountable. Again, sabotaging yourself. You don't want to do that. So you want to hold yourself accountable. You have a, a note of every single thing that you ate today. What you did yesterday, you see where you could do better tomorrow. And as I said, the meals that you're having, it doesn't matter. But for me, it doesn't matter. And it's all about what you eat. I mean, when you eat and how much you eat. Right? Never have food to go in your home. Especially foods that would allow you to be putting on weight in your sense too much of these sweet stuff too much of the salty stuff you don't want these soft drinks you don't want to have these things let these things be things that you have to leave your home to go to the store to get let it be not so easily accessible because yeah you're setting up yourself a failure yes so i hope these were some easy quick tips for you to be successful on this journey and if you uh, want me to cover anything on this topic again leave it in the comments and i will gladly do so and if before this video ends and i close off everything i think i should add anything else to this video be certain i will add it all right thanks for joining me for another episode of chocolate and chit chat and don't forget to check out my other playlist of my previous chocolate and chit chat videos bye